Okay, so Digital Imaging 2, we're working on the Heroes Fight Bias project. And uh, just an update on midterm grades, they were due for faculty to hand in at 5 p.m. today. Um, so what I've done is uh, shared your grades with you on Canvas. Uh, there's a section called uh, midterm grades as recorded on Canvas. And so you can go there and see what I, what I entered into my FSU. Um, not all teachers will do that just as a heads up. You won't necessarily see midterm grades unless they're sharing that with you. And you don't see it at the same time that we enter it into my FSU. It takes like a week or something for you to be able to see your midterm grades. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, and uh, if there are missing assignments that that really do count towards your grade, I would recommend for you to still hand them in uh, if they're still listed as missing. Um, we are right now in the part of the project where we're working towards a Wednesday deadline of getting approval on one of your, on one panel from your animation and Photoshop. So if I click into this, um, here comes Emma. So, if I click into this assignment, this is the one panel from your animation in Photoshop. Um, we're doing things differently with our files. Hi, Emma. Hi. Uh, we are submitting them to Google Drive, and then you're going to submit any comments in Canvas. Uh, no actual submission to Canvas is needed. I'm looking for the Photoshop files as your delivery, because I want to be able to see how you're naming your layers. That's actually a really important part of that, what we're doing. So if I go to Imaging 2 and into Heroes Fight Bias, part of the project we're working on is style of one panel in Photoshop. And I've asked for you to do it in this file size 1920 by 1920. Um, and basically, you're going to have your character designed and colored, and you're going to have your text uh, ready for universal um, design, which means that it's able to be read at a phone size, which is going to be very small or projected up on a, on a screen in a classroom with all the lights on. That's the way that they usually do it. So kids can't pass back and forth notes. Um, so you're not to have this done yet today. I'm just going to check on where you're at with your progress. So how are we doing? Do you guys feel like comfortable in drawing and animate, or not in animate, but in Photoshop and then doing the coloring and, and kind of finishing it off? Hopefully you learn how to do that in, in imaging one. And if not, I'm gonna do some demos for you as, as needed today. So Emma, you, you were gonna say something? Oh, no, I was just gonna say, I'm just working on the line art right now, but yeah, it, it's getting there. Um, I'm pretty sure, like I said, I'm going to have it all done by Wednesday, so I'm not worried. <laughs> Good. Yeah. And China, you're, you're nodding your head. <laughs> Even though you made a hammer all weekend, you have something going there. <laughs> um, did you want us to just color it kind of the same way we did with our last thing? or? Um, so your, your imaging is up to you. Um, it does have to be flat art. Mm -hmm. So there shouldn't be like gradients. Too much shading. Right? And there, like, the shading can be in cell shading. So you can see this by Lauren. Um, she's, she's got the um, one, one tone for the, the color of the shirt and then um, is just painting on it another tone. So you, what I would do is in Photoshop is just select that purple. And then with it being selected, then paint on it. That would be a way to do it. There's another way that you can do it in Photoshop where you have in your layer, you can choose um, paint on pixels. It looks like a little Purina grid on the, the layer and you can click that and you can paint on it if you've separated your things in that way. But those are things that I can demo for you if you need to today. Um, I would definitely be using the method um, white fill. If I go to kcaddlc.org um, and into software tutorials, into Adobe Suite and into Photoshop, um, there's, there's a lot of uh, help in here for you. Um, so let's see the ones that would be specific to 
your needs, the white fill action for storyboard and painting with flats using white fill. This is, um, we are definitely using uh, paintings with flats and using, well, not found. I'm gonna have to fix that link. I'll probably be able to search for it. Let me see what's going on here. Sorry about that. If I do a white fill search, white fill action for storyboarding, painting with flat. So it's going to be this one. I'm going to have to change that. Um, but basically, you know, we're doing something that's kind of like in the style that I did for uh, a game for underbite first and goal. Um, you're, you're moving through the drawing phase and, and getting into trying to make the finished art phase. This board actions um, is what you would use to do white fill. It's an ATN, and this takes you through how to how to use it kind of step by step, going from action to like a fill without having to paint all the edges and try to find it. It's going to find it for you because you've already done the drawing. Are you all familiar with this process? It's like the magic bullet. So <laughs> if we have one magic bullet, this is it. And this is what we would recommend. So you can see that I've done white fill um, on this um, by, by seeing the, the grid here. And then I'm able to change just the color of his pants to be blue by shifting the, the hue sat, which, uh, which I'm doing there. Um, so it's a, it's a very quick way to be able to paint your shapes so that things get filled into your color sets um, and would be my recommendation. Now, some of you may be beyond this phase, and so this might not be helpful, but I still want you to know how to do this. This is one of the industry process processes that is helpful to do. Um, so this, this whole set, I'm gonna um, copy this and put this in the chat for you, okay? Um, so go ahead and grab that from the chat. Um, so Steve Hedeveld is an artist that uh, works for Nickelodeon the Animation Studios and works on a lot of uh, Netflix shows like Tangled and things like that. Um, he uh, he developed this painting with flats process, but this is a this is something that is used in the industry all over the place. We just grabbed his his action set. He graduated from KCAD um, and and works with us pretty closely on that. Um, on that sort of thing. So I know that I have to change this uh, in the DLC. Let's see, um, I think it would be helpful. So, so let's say you have a drawing, essentially you already have that drawing and you can just click the white fill action and it would fill it. That's, that's the way that it, that it works if your drawing is on a different layer and you follow that, that process. Um, I'd love to see where you are all at with your files. Um, and so maybe we can do kind of a quick uh, walk around. Um, so let me set that, that up for us. Um, OK, so the question is, uh, what are we supposed to do in Animate? It, we are not using Animate. We're using Photoshop to create one full, one panel scene fully designed that's going to include this, this file size. So what I can do right now is I can actually show you setting up a file. Maybe we can demo right from the beginning, setting up a file and all of that in China. Maybe that will help, okay? Cool, thank you. Okay, yeah. Um, so like I said, I wanted to, to grab a file. So let me, let me find something that I can do that with. When you're deciding which panel to do in the style that you're gonna have in your finished piece, you wanna have it be um, one where, where you have a lot of the characters. So I would choose this one for Emma, where there's the three characters, it's got the environment. It is helpful to have the, the font, even if it's not on this particular panel, deciding the si size and scale of the font. So you might actually want to even do this one, might be more appropriate to, to do for your one style, because it has font and two characters. So you want something that is the most complicated of, of your set. So Emma, did you put your... Yep. All right. While we're downloading this, I want everybody to go to that DLC um, site that I gave you. 
and I want you to go find the um, action script file. Let's see, it should have been on the top here. Here it is, the board actions. So it's underneath this green picture um, of the wins and losses for the football characters, creating a line drawing, duplicate the layer, then use white fill action in Kendall alum Steve Hennevelt's board actions. So I'm gonna download this for the first time too. I'm gonna click on this. It's going to bring us to the board actions.atn. That's short for actions in Photoshop. We're gonna download it. Now, remember in the past, I've asked you to have a folder uh, on your computer called presets and brushes. This is a preset. Um, this is the kind of thing that you don't wanna lose. You wanna have backed up things like color swatches, things like brushes that you're gonna use all the time and um, actions, things like this. Does anybody need to know where to find this? Do you want me to put this in the chat? Um, yeah. I'll put the direct file in the chat for you, okay? So that's the file. And then don't double click on this. I'm gonna show you how to access this file in, uh, in Photoshop. Um, So for me, I'm going to um, just make sure that I put Emma's file that I'm going to use in the in the right folder. Okay, um, I'm going to share a different part of my screen um, so that you can see all of this functioning. Okay. Um, screen three. Okay. All right, do you see that my PC file management system over here? Some of you are on a Mac, it's gonna look a lot prettier on a Mac, but here we go. This is my board actions. This is inside of my downloads. I want to move this too, and maybe you have a, a different way to do it, but I've got in my favorites here, brushes and presets. This is a preset. I want you to move this to your brushes and presets folder. So you can either drag or use the move to if you're on a PC. Um, so in this one so far from the class that we've been doing, I've got the universal color swatches for animate and uh, the board actions.atn. If I used very special brushes or something, I would want them to be in here too so I don't forget them. I'm going to uh, now go find Emma's file and Open that up in Photoshop and bring it over to this. Okay, um, here it is. It's coming over. Uh, it this had an issue with with font. I don't have the font, but it do, that really doesn't matter because I'm not going to use the your font right now. So. Um, so here's Emma's storyboard. So what we're trying to do is we're moving from the storyboard to, uh, to creating one panel in Photoshop. So that's our goal. So let me, let me actually take us back to where, where our goal is. Um, so I'll bring this over. Do you guys all see this Google site? Okay, good. So our goal is to make something that's colored, something that is, is a finished look. That's really what my goal is. Um, so it could vary, but essentially they're all gonna be flat art. Um, and so Emma, we had talked about either doing this one. Does this have a speech bubble in it? Is this, does that have plans to have one? Okay, so then, then let's pick the number four panel. <coughs> And I'll take a look and see, like, we, I've got the rulers up, Command or Control R will bring rulers up in Photoshop. And this is um, about at that 640 file size. Um, but like I said, let me um, bring this back up. <coughs> Excuse me. Our goal is to make a file that's 1920 by 1920, 72 DPI. So that's what we're going to do in Photoshop here. I'll just minimize it. File, new, 
So why don't you follow along with me? Go to File New. And I had made this previously. I made a 1920 by 1920 at 72 PPI. DPI, PPI, it's the same kind of thing when you're working digitally. So you can change that pixels dimensions here. I'm going to call it Heroes Fight Bias. And you might want to put your name on it, Emma. Sala, mine would say Susan Bonner, <clears throat> if I were doing this. Um, and then you might also want to write um, the title of, uh, you each have an individual topic that you're dealing with. So, um, and so that would be the, the, sta the standard that you're using. So I'm, Emma, I know that your, your piece is about cancer, but it is, what's the main, topic for the social justice standard that you're using? Um, I think we said bias against like people with no hair. So I, I'm trying to think of like. It's probably like inclusion. We might just be able to put, um, yeah, no hair bias. You want to just write that for right now? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Um, so this is a piece that's 1920 by 1920. And just remember that <clears throat> the file ultimately will be 640 by 640. So that's, if I hold down shift on this, see how um, my, my selection right now, that's the final piece. So we're making it a lot bigger right now yeah. so that um, our, we can zoom in and do drawing in, in a way that, that functions. It probably doesn't even have to be that, that big, but it's just a, a way to get a good visual that we can use for other things as well. So I'm gonna deselect Control D or not. Maybe my shortcut doesn't work. Maybe I was on something else. There we go. Okay. So the first thing to do is to change this from background. Um, we want to we want to leave the background blank. We want to make a new layer. So I'm going to make a new layer there. Um, I'm going to go back and take a look at your um, sketch. And we said we were going to do number four. So you have. Um, do you have this set up already in layers, Emma? That we could mm -hmm. just change. So um, you know this file better than me. Where is that scene for? It looks like you mm -hmm. label things by scenes. Yeah. It's scene easy. four box, scene four drawing, scene four rest. Is there three layers? Yeah. But that's not the people. Where's the people? In Photoshop, by the way, if you hit V, which is the move tool, and you have auto select on, you can click on the layer and it will go to it. So it's actually um, scene two is what it is because you had duplicated her from before. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. So it's so what I would want to do is kind of shift click through what is this stuff and put it into a new folder. Commander control G is the group. So I'm going to control G that mm -hmm. and turn that off and see if I get most of it, which I did. I want to just go and find that text, um, which I'll just click on and it's there. Um, so I'll drag this into here. And then I wonder if this is the box. Yep. Drag this down and name this scene four. I'm pretty close. Yeah. So actually, I don't need any of, I don't need the box itself. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to have two pieces next to, next to myself. So um, next to myself, next to each other. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go to, um, window, arrange, and set up two vertical, okay? And then, so this is the new file that I have over here on the right. And this is uh, Emma's storyboard. So now I'm gonna take this folder, which is everything, arrow it over, 
and then take it and drag the folder itself onto this piece. Voila, it's on there. <laughs> And now I'm going to be able to make it fancier, right? And that's kind of our yeah. goal is to be able to make it uh, stronger looking stuff. So now I'm going to hit F for full screen, which for some reason, whenever I touch stuff here, it goes to my other screen. It's totally a fluke that I have. There we go. OK, so this um, scene four has all of the assets beautifully already on layers. I'm just going to arrow this up, click on the scene, hit Control or Command T, um, which brings up an error message because there's some text in there. It says, re-rendering the text layer, we're sorry, blah, 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 will cause its layout to change. The existing pixel data will be used instead. Continue. Sure. Let's see how that turns out. Um, so on a piece like this that I'm going to be transforming, I want to hold down. If you hold down shift, it's going to keep its proportions. Well, actually, you don't have to do that anymore. In new Photoshop, you can just transform it. And it would keep the proportion. Let's see, it doesn't stretch it out. But if I hold down um, option, I think it goes from the center. But I think that with this one, Emma's was, it has a bunch of this white stuff. So. Um, Let's see, I don't have touch on right now. Otherwise I would go like this on my Cintiq. But what I'll do is I'll just hit return, which says yes to the transformation. Ah, do you guys see, still see my Photoshop? Everything went away. Okay, I need to zoom out. Um, so I'm gonna hit zoom, get the Z for the zoom tool, hold down alt or option on a Mac and then make it a little bit smaller. And then Commander Control T again. Oh, I have to be on that set. Commander Control T again. Still asking that error message. Make this big enough to fit into the scene. Until that's right about right. Emma, do you want those those bodies to go off stage or what's most important? Having that bubble there? Yeah, we can have it like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would hit return or there's a little check mark up there and then that that works. Um, so the key to this is I, I want to use these kind of as as sketches to be able to draw over top of. So I'm gonna just take the opacity of these down. You've actually already done that for your lockers. Um, we would just take the opacity of all this stuff um, down so that we can draw over top. And the goal then is to just draw over top. Um, the key to this is that we're using flat art. So, um, you can use line or you can not use line. That's completely up to you. Um, um, I'm going to draw this character uh, for you. What Does he have a name that you're using? No. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to do another layer. Um, boy one, I'll call it. And then I'm going to hit B for brush. Now in. Um, in our last project that we were doing in this class where we using we were using animate right and i had a rule that we have to use pencil in animate to do the line work okay very different in photoshop we're going to use the brush tool and in the brush tool you have these these pressure sensitive pieces this should come come over to you do you guys have that when you push on that does that look familiar okay um no layers are selected, right? I know, I have to be on this. Um, so I'm gonna hit D is the shortcut for getting default colors on here. I'm just gonna do a test, but making this a little bit bigger. And so it was weird that I don't see the pressure sensitive, which would show like usually before it would show thin to thick, which is what this is actually doing. Like when I paint this, I can get thin to thick, right? You see how that's functioning? 
Command or Control Z a couple of times. So I'm just really testing my brush right now to see if it works. Do we have a specific style that you want us to follow for line work? Or, well, you did say we don't necessarily have to have, so it doesn't really matter. You don't have to have line. The key to this is that you're going to have flat art. So Okay, that's um, the only. Yeah, so um, for Emma's piece, she's got line, right? Emma, you're gonna wanna have line on there, right? So um, I would just zoom in on it and start drawing. And I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna show you all how to use um, the, the white fill, okay? As a way to help you to, to be able to work on this. So I'm just gonna draw his head first. Um, I'm really bumpy. Do you see that? Like it's not super smooth. Photoshop has a smooth tool. So this is one of the reasons why people were using Clip Studio in the past. This smooth tool right here is the key to making this better. So I'm going to com command or control Z a couple times until I get done with that. I'm going to hit V again and I'm going to up my smoothing. I like it way up. It's going to slow your paint brush down, but it's going to smooth things out. So here we go. See how nice and smooth that is? Now that's too thick, so I'm going to have to undo that. So it takes a while to get your the look that you want. There we go. It's probably closer to what you're looking for, right, Emma? And then you're just going to kind of work at getting the, the look that we want. So am I getting the kind of style you're looking for, Emma? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my brush is being really slowed down, but that's that's okay. Um, I'm looking for the smooth line that I'm getting from it. Okay, so um, I'm finishing off that line and that's kind of important because I wanna be able to have shapes that are that are finished. Boy, I think something is wrong with my Photoshop that it's not, not showing that variegated stroke. Um, so I'm just gonna finish this head with, with an eye. Um, and his mouth so that I can show you this white fill idea. Okay. Um, Okay, so if I turn off all of this other stuff and what I like to do is turn the background into a gray. So I'm gonna double click on the background on the, on the word and I get the layer comes up and it says it's layer zero. I'm just gonna call it back. You can just keep it layer zero if you want to. Um, but I'm gonna use a shortcut command or control U which is image adjustments. So you can go up to image, image adjustments, uh, if you forget that, and then just darken it a little bit. Because it's important for us to see that we're gonna have white fills. So um, that gives me that. And then the next thing that I'm gonna do is go to my actions, What's history. I don't have actions up. I'm gonna go to window and actions. So can you all do this with me? Because I've been kind of drawing, but now you want to make sure that this gets add, added to your piece. So window, actions. We all downloaded the actions, the .atn from Stephen Henneveld's, which has board actions, they're called. When you first open up uh, Photoshop, the um, uh, the default actions come into this. Um, which is like wood grain and vignette. It's kind of like not really useful stuff for what we're gonna do. We're just gonna arrow that up. So did everybody find where you're supposed to get actions under window actions? Okay. Um, next, we're going to go to this hamburger menu on the action set. We're going to click on it and we're going to go to load actions right here. Okay load actions. And in your file folder that you made for brushes and presets, you're going to go find that brushes and presets and then boardactions.atn. You would click on it. Same thing if you're on a Mac. I'm on a PC. Click on it. You can double click or you can click on the word load or OK, whatever it is. 
One or more of your shortcuts and board actions set will hide menu key shortcuts, remove the conflicting action shortcuts. Sure, I guess so. Never get, really gotten that message before. Okay, so what I've got now, where it, was everybody able to download the board actions into there? Okay, so this is board actions. Um, inside of this is white fill, this is important. So um, don't do this right now, just watch what I do and then I'll have you do it after the words. Um, this has some fun ones. F'd up is like when you F something up and you draw something on the background layer. So remember how the background layer is white and if you draw on it, that black line will end up on that background layer. That F'd up action pulls the black line off of the, of the white. So it selects it and then brings it off. That's helpful when you forget to not draw on the background layer. What we're gonna do is white fill, um, but I wanna do it in such a way that we don't have to click on this. We're gonna use button mode, but I do wanna show you what all is in white fill. All of these arrow downs are exactly what it took. It took about five different actions to be able to make white fill. So it's something that you don't wanna to have to keep on clicking through and it, it makes it your production mode faster. So um, I'm gonna click on the hamburger menu. I want you guys to all do this as well. Click on your hamburger menu and click on button mode. And you should get this kind of rainbowy button mode. Okay. So like I said in the demo um, earlier, let's see, let me see if I can find uh, the DLC. Um, so in this uh, piece that I was showing you before, um, this is our ultimate goal, but in order to do it, we take the drawing and we wanna duplicate the drawing line layer and then we'll use the white fill and I'll show you why. So first we're gonna go to the boy one um, and I'm gonna call it boy one line. Then I'm going to duplicate that if I hold down Alt or Option on your Mac, um, that will be a duplicated one. So we do that because I want this one down below to be the white fill. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click on the word white fill and I just fill them. Ah, oh, China, you did the big, it's huge, right? To be able to have everything line up in your lines and then you don't have to go through and paint and paint and paint. It's um, how did you get to the, the um, rainbow thing again? Button mode. In the hamburger men menu of actions, it's called button mode. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yep. So there we go. this has a few more steps that I want you to do. You need to make sure that you save your line layers as a separate layer. Okay. So I'm on two layers. I have this one that's called boy line and this was the original. I'm going to call this white right now. Or sometimes we call this flats. I'm going to then turn off the line that's on top. You don't really see it, but I just turned it off. And I'm going to hit Control U, which brings up HUSAT. Remember, that's under Image Adjustments HUSAT. I'm going to lighten. So this just fills it with white. OK? Then I'm going to turn my line back on. OK, so this is the way that I know that I've got a fill and I've got a line. OK, so the next step is to kind of, um, you know, I've got that boy, but I want his hair to be a different color than his skin. So this is where I zoom in and use my selection. So instead of painting with my brush, I'm going to actually select. Selection can be faster than painting with a brush. So I'm going to hit L for lasso. I'm going to go and find that shape. And it's OK if I'm a little bit off. I'm going to find what would be his skin tone. It can be messy here because it doesn't matter there. And oh, my dancing ants went away. Maybe I'll control Z. I don't know if I did something. Oh, see, they were there, but not really. So there they are. OK. <laughs> um, so now I'm going to use my dumping tool. So um, uh, Here's my dumping tool. I'm gonna get a color that will, will work for his skin tone. And um, I'm 
This stomping tool right here is different, not 3D. We want it to be just regular paint bucket G. <coughs> and on this layer that I've called white right now, we're going to turn it into flats essentially. Command D to deselect and B for brush again. And this is where I'm going to just going to kind of come in and clean it up. Okay. So um, then after I've got that done, then it's very quick to make his hair color different. Gee. Okay. Bam. So that's what you're going to do. If you use that method, it's going to make you a lot faster. Um, being faster makes you make more money. If you're faster, you have, <laughs> you can do more things, right? <coughs> if I wanted to change um, something like his hair, I can select it. Hitting um, W is the magic wand tool. And I'm going to click on it and command U or control U and changing the color. Um, let's see. Now, do we want him to be punk? What are we, what are we doing with his hair, Emma? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going with natural, but I guess we could go punk. Mm -hmm. So on this, you can see that there's a little bit of um, color shifting that I have to do. So I'm going to, like this was not in there. So I'll just clean it up. So, yep. And that's all underneath on this layer called white. If I turn off the line layer, you can see that's underneath it. Having thick lines is helpful because then you have a little bit of give as you go. So this is a process that takes a while to get these paintings done. So, um, you know, give yourself enough time to be able to make one panel that's sweet. Now for cell shading, that's, that's kind of another step, right? cell shading that we did in Animate, we made a line and then we filled on the edge of it. So it's a little bit different here in Photoshop. What I would do for that is, again, lasso. I'm going to hit L for lasso. I'm going to find uh, where I want to drop a little drop shadow. So you see, I'm doing, oh, why is it getting rid of my dancing ants. I wonder if that's like, um, I've never seen that happen before. I'm on a new computer and I haven't done Photoshop with this process yet. I think that the selection's still there like I had before, but essentially, did you see how I was kind of messy around the hair part? Because I don't need to, um, I don't need to paint around where the brown is because it's going to dump only on the brown for where I want the shadow to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click I for the paint picker. Yeah, see, there it is. Weird. There's my selection. That's that messy part. I'm going to click I. That gives me this tone of his skin. I'm going to go a little bit darker. And then I'm going to hit G for the paint bucket or just grab it. And then you see how it only dumped in this part, even though this part was selected, it's because it's finding that edge. One other thing to recognize is that the paint bucket as well as the um, paint brush has modes. It, it's got normal and behind. So you can paint behind things, you can paint um, normal. Generally, we're going to choose normal, but um, let me show you command or control D. Um, if I wanted to paint behind, um, let me see, where would, why would I do that? Maybe if I did his collar or something when I'm deeper into it, I would um, hit B for brush, which my shortcuts are not working. So I'm going to have to keep clicking that. B for brush. Um, I'm going to paint behind for a shadow here. Um, and using the behind tool, make my brush a little bit bigger. I'm using brackets. The brackets are on the keyboard, O and P, and then small bracket makes it bigger and here I got a camera these brackets right here see them <laughs> oh no am I going to be able to get my camera back on there I actually took the camera off instead of doing the filter thing there we go okay um so paint behind on 
I've got a ton of smoothing on. I want to remove so much of that smoothing if I'm going to paint. Um, that's his neck, for example, which I would have already done all the line work before I do any of this painting, right? So I just painted behind. That means that I can't paint on top of where the chin is. I'm only getting this bottom part. So if I turn that line layer off, you can see how that functioned. So I'm not painting over anything that I needed to have over there. So if I wanted to get back to this highlight, I pick that color I'm painting behind. See? So I keep that nice line that I did. So I do a lot of um, finding what's the small thing and then paint the next thing next to it using that paint behind method as I go. Okay. Any questions about the process that I'm recommending? Okay. Why did no one teach it to us before? <laughs> um, At least me. In imaging one, you did Photoshop, right? Yeah, I didn't use this kind of method though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I'm glad you know it now. This is important yeah. because it's a, it's a part of the process that we use. Thanks, Emma, for letting me use your um, your no. image. Uh, it's gonna turn out great.